Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I feel like every time we start these, I'm always laughing. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, I, I'm listening to them. I'm, re- I'm laughing too. We're trying to get all the kids down. Well, well, one kid down. We got two planned Legos and then one trying to take a nap so we can maybe get a little time to actually get in the word a little bit on Sabbath. So, uh, yeah. But it's been a restful day so far. We, blow, we blew the shofar this morning and got all the boys out blowing the shofar and and uh, got on our hands and knees and prayed and, you know, it's been amazing so mm-hmm. far. Yeah, it's been a really... Um it's been a really interesting and, um, I don't know, I don't exactly even know the word to, to use to describe the last five or six days and what's happened. Yeah, you've had an amazing week. Yeah, we well, have two through me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, a blessing of community. <laughs> yeah, so um, we've been praying for community. Um we have an online community, obviously, that many Torah brothers and sisters um, on social media platforms. And uh, Jim has um, a community of believers through um, no- Noel. Um, what's his name? Uh, well, unexpected cosmology, but it's not. I mean, these are these are community online and online's oh, great yeah. yeah it's great but you know yeah and that's what i mean we, we have desire, an online community we desire being able to actually have talk real to friendships people. yeah and have real friendships because when you come to torah you lose everything it's like and we didn't realize i mean we thought we were the only ones you know and then then you start finding Torah people online and you're like wow they've all lost their friends and family mm-hmm. and everybody because for whatever reason you People know, hate he- this. Heaven forbid you keep Yah's commands. Yeah. Um, but they've always hated it. Ever since the command was given in the garden, you know? Yeah. You know, the devil's always been against it. Hasatan's always been saying, whoa, did did Yah really say that? Yeah. Are you sure Yah's saying that? You know? So. Yeah. And so we've, um, I've been praying over the last uh, year um, for Yah to send me someone like, what David had. David had um, a friendship in Jonathan that, and it was really probably his only close friend. You know, David, Jonathan was willing to die for David, you know, and, um, but they truly were um, like minded. You know, they loved Yah, they loved Yah's instruction. And did they follow it perfectly? No. <laughs> but they guarded it. And, I think that probably is what brought their, you know, it probably is at the core of their friendship. Um, You know, they held, they held things in common. And so I've been praying for that um, over the last year that y'all would just send me somebody. And I've been off social media for the last mm, nine, 10 months. And as our, um, as our land is growing and we are, um, and it's, not from us, it's completely from Yah, as He has just continued to bless us, and He's just given us some great gifts in our life over the last year. Um, I have decided to kind of change my online presence from it being a very personal account and sharing everything. And I changed that last year, but I actually changed my name and wanted to share her story of how, you know, we, you know, came to this place of one flock. We've acquired sheep, and we have been through a lambing season and there's just some amazing, um, revelations I think that we've had through having, you know, livestock and animals and experiencing life and death. And, and, uh, anyways, I've just felt a calling to come back, um, online to encourage, um, fellow Torah brothers and sisters. Um, and hopefully my goal is hopefully y'all would just send me one friend, one person that I could truly connect with outside of social media and just have a friendship with. Well, someone you could say Shabbat Shalom to, or, or say, or, you know, or just share what y'all's doing without it being judged as, as if we're heretics. Right. You know, right. Unfortunately, that's what we've received. Yeah, and we've had, you know, relationships and friendships severed over and it's not a it's not a religion. <laughs> I keep saying over our beliefs, but it's truly just 
you know, our belief in the word, our belief in the Father's instruction, Torah and Yeshua, and they're one and the same. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> I made my first post on Instagram in almost a year and uh, decided to share it to my husband's Instagram account, and which I never have done. Um, we've always kept a separate account and you have, you know, your whole account really is just nothing but Torah followers. But anyways, had a sister, a Torah sister reach out and, um, comment on this post because we really discussed how I just shared how we came to the desire of truly raising our own sheep. And, um, she had some questions about it and had, you know, similar convictions around, um, really, preparing lamb for Passover, knowing that it is sacrificed to a false god when it is harvested and when it is butchered. And so we... The lamb you get in stores. The lamb that you get in stores, yes. And um, abomination packaged food is what I oh think my I gosh. And yeah, it. and But this whole week has been that, which is interesting, this whole week has been discovering... More, uh, yes. I mean, we've been following, we're on, we started following Torah in 2018. Yeah. So, you know, started learning about Torah and seeking it. Um, and we're still, we're still learning. But, uh, but yeah, this whole week we found, wow, most of the food we eat and is in the stores is abominations. Yeah. They're evil. Byproducts you know? of pork is kind of what I call it. You and know? all kinds of stuff, yeah. I mean, and a fellow Torah, I don't even know who posted it. I wish I did, but um, posted a chart of a pig and basically different parts of a pig from the bones, which we know are made, you know, are ground down to make um, gelatin to just the the fat of the pig. I mean, all aspects of the pig and how it's found in everything from just, you know, your pantry items to things that you things that you would not even think um, cause it doesn't say, if it doesn't say pork or lard then, or gelatin, then you're kind of like, oh, we're good, but we're not, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's in monoglycerides and diglycerides. Um, it's a, it's a trans fat that can sometimes come from a pig. It's not always, it can mm-hmm. come from, I think, was it palm oil? Um, those come from soy. mono and diglycerides come from so- soy palm or pig. And so literally we just were completely st- stripping more things out of our, um, and we were throwing stuff away from our pantry. We were throwing away bread from our pantry yeah. and heavy cream from our pantry and yogurt. Oh my goodness, yogurt that I've been feeding my boys had gelatin in it. And I just, I guess I just have not been, you know, I'm not d- as disciplined in that area of, you know, truly turning and looking at the back of the labels. And so, yeah, so leading up to all of, to, to really kind of where we are in this conversation about community. It's just, yeah, y'all has con- is just continually revealing to us how um, this world and the, how infiltrated our food is by the enemy and how he wants to seek. He's, he's seeking us out to, to truly kill us and destroy us and to anything that he can to separate us from the Father and anything that he can do to... Um, get us to break the commands. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing it unknowingly right under our noses. We've been eating things even up until this last week that had byproducts of pig. And so we've been fine trying to find a website, just sidebar um, of just a, you know, website that would allow us to, you know, go and type in a product, for example, and to see if it's, you know, kosher or vegan or vegetarian. And vegan doesn't always tell you because vegan could be, and you know, that's, really a byproduct of any animal mm. or product of any animal, but really more vegetarian or kosher. So we're still trying to find a good website that does that, but um, it definitely has made me more aware of anything. It, well, it's... it's That's a website that needs to be started. So yeah, it does. For all the Torah techies. And maybe there's somebody <laughs> out there that already knows the something Torah that doesn't... Techs. Torah techies. <laughs> I'm, maybe, I'm not that. I could not do that. No, but, but and maybe there's something out there that um, could be shared, but... Anyways, it's just further, um, I guess, pushed me to to the point of wanting to grow my. I've, I've been saying, grow my grocery, grow our groceries, and doing everything that we can, preparing everything that we can, from you know our breads to, um, you know, at some point. I mean, obviously, we have chickens now, and we'll have our own, you know, meat and our own eggs, and but well, like scripture is a homesteading book. Yeah, it is. I mean, it really is. It's when true. you the more you get into it, and you realize. Wow, Yah was giving so many instructions 
for your land and how to cultivate it and till it and and grow your own vegetables. Yes. And because he he knew the kings were going to, you know, were going to come up with all their, you know, their dainties or whatever, they, their, um, their foods and mm-hmm. all their pleasures. And, yeah. You know, what it was it say, like eating at a king's table. I can't remember where that's at. But right. Talking about, like, you know, don't enjoy these things that the kings offer you, you know, all their food because it's abomination. Yeah. It's things that you they've hid in there that you don't know. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, it should be a red flag when you see all these things in all our food. Yeah. It, it should be like, wow, Just the enemy in, is truly yeah, even trying if it's to not, get us to disobey. Yeah, even if it's not a pork byproduct. Yeah, anything, Just yeah. anything. I mean, there's so many uh, just horrific ingredients in our foods today, in our in processed foods. But And I shared it, that with yeah. someone, you know, and like, could you believe they did this and put pork in here? And, and you know, I was told, well, sometimes you can take it too far. But, you know, and I guess like, from the fleshly side, you're like, you, I start thinking, well, yeah, maybe I'm taking it too far. Mm. But then I, th- then I think about the truth. What, is, what does the word say? What does Yahuwah's word say? Does he ever tell us that don't go too far serving me? Yeah. Don't serve me too Be holy too, to a point. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, be holy to a point. No, he wants us to be completely separated mm-hmm. from this evil, disgusting world. Yeah. This world is full of abominations. Yeah. He wants us to be completely set apart, completely holy. Be perfect, for I am perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, or for your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's what we're to do, and it's just, yeah. Am I going too far? Absolutely. I should go further. Mm-hmm. You know, and the further you get, my goodness. The more you want out. <laughs> the more you want <laughs> you out. The more you probably out. can escape. Yeah. I mean, you think about people like Enoch, uh, being able to transcend the veil, go up to. Go up to heaven. Yeah. Go up to paradise. Yeah. You think about Noah being chosen out of his generation to escape the flood. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Moses. I mean, all these people were completely set apart and they were chosen to leave uh, the world. Yeah. Chosen to do something incredible. Yeah. Um, Man, it's beautiful. So, yeah. So, it's just been um, continually unlearning of the world's ways and... Um, a continual learning of Yah's ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, so in that kind of, tra- you know, that kind of, I guess. Um, well, that was your it, post was kind of about. Is, yeah, it was about, can you of, believe what's in how lamb yeah. is processed? And so the sister, you know, asked, you know, well, we just had some really good conversation about, well, you know, if even finding an unblemished lamb, even if you're processing, even if you're raising your own lamb and you're processing it, is it really even possible to present a lamb perfect, you yeah. know, a perfect lamb? And so we just, we just, I don't know. I felt an instant connection to her and she commented on my husband's post, which is funny on his Instagram account. And I wasn't even following her on my Instagram account. And so I kind of, and it's, you know, it, it's, it's intimidating, right? This is, she and I have already talked about how intimidating it is to get on social media and put yourself out there and, and try to have conversation, even within your, you know, a, a community of like-minded believers. It's intimidating, um, fear of rejection and fear of, well, you know, will they even respond? Will they engage? And I've had plenty of, you know, great conversations, surface level with Torah sisters, but, um, I reached out, friended her. She friended me back, um, on our one flock account and I don't know, it just, <laughs> the friendship was just instantaneous. It was just an immediate connection. Um, we just are, we started sharing our testimony. She shared her testimony, which she wrote down, which, you know, was amazing and beautiful and just a tear jerking testimony of just how Yah has just worked to bring her back to him and to his ways and, um, and, it's, it just, we've had this instant connection. And so literally we've only, you know, we're five days into our friendship, but I feel like I've known her my whole life. <laughs> and <laughs> I won't name her on this because we'll post this uh, at some point. But I just had to, I just had to share how blessings come in ways you don't expect because I have been, we've been memorizing Psalm 40 in school, the boys and I have. And so we took Psalm 40 verse one because of, um, really our story of 
raising 51 chickens. We purchased 51 chicks in February. And anyways, we've been, we lost so many in the first nine days of raising them due to a number of issues. And I just was just begging for the father, like, why is this happening? Why are we losing these chicks? I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to, you know, take care of our family and raise these chicks and, you know, be, this be a provision. And then he, I started reading Psalms 40 backwards for well, Psalms backwards, starting at like, we were down to like, what, 44 chicks. And I read Psalms 44. And then I read Psalms 43 because we day lost we another chick. Every we would lose one, we would read the Psalms for yeah. that number. And um, so we were, anyway, so we got to Psalms 40, or we got to Psalms 41, and Jim was like, well, maybe y'all just wants us to have 40. And I was like, maybe. Well, we lost one more. And then Psalms 40 says, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for Yahuwah. And he turned to me, and he heard my cry for help. And um, if you read the Psalms from 42 to 44, David is mourning. And it says that his tears are, um, I can't remember how it says, but he just sees like weeping at night. And I feel like I've been weeping a lot lately over a number of things, but a lot of loss on our land. There's a lot of life, right? Um, life and death on our land. But I've experienced a lot of very hard uh, past six months to a year. Yeah. Extremely hard. Yeah. Very difficult um, season of um, trials and diversity of trials yeah. between, you know, a number of things, relationships, work, you know, just a lot of stressors, a lot of trials. And so here we are trying to raise chicks and it just seems like, you know, I said, what am I going to, I guess I'm just going to lose all of them, you know? And so I read Psalms 40 verse one and, and, um, well, actually before that I had read you know, when Yeshua was talking in Matthew about, um, the birds of the of the heaven and how they neither sow nor eat nor they um, store in storehouses or something like that. But he, you know, says, "Doesn't your heavenly Father care for them?" And basically, aren't you worth more than they? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Father, I know you care for these chicks, and I know I'm worth more than that. Um, just please hear our cry. But just hear. We us. had a cry for deliverance. Yeah. And what's amazing is those psalms, leading to, well, going backwards from fifty one to forty is all struggle it's david's cry yes. if you read it backwards it's all him crying and then you get to psalms 40 and it's deliverance yeah that's it's him perfectly said being yes. it's yeah it's him being delivered yeah from all these trials but you have to read it backwards which is hilarious yeah. and yah for whatever reason wanted us to learn that through the death of these chicks and and that wasn't anything i mean we we that was just the icing on the cake is losing <laughs> our chicks. There was many more things going on. Yes. And still is. I mean, we're still struggling. And I think, uh, I don't know, we were talking last night and how, wow, it's like, it's almost amazing that we're struggling. Mm-hmm. Because we're being chastised because we're legitimate children, you know? Yes. An illegitimate child does not get a spanking. Right. You know? And it's just, it's amazing that our father is like, he wants to clean us he wants to purify we're fine yeah exactly <laughs> and he we know to... and i think it's because we're in the end of days yeah. and there's a great deception and a great delusion coming over the whole earth and it's even coming. in and even in the churches and um in the you know so what i really wanted to say is something <laughs> that i found from psalm 40 well, verse 18 one minutes in and we it's haven't... okay <laughs> this is what this is the beauty of it because this has just been this has been a blessing of a of a week for me. Um, okay, so Psalms forty verse one. I just I feel like this um, this patiently waiting for Yah and and he turned and he he's heard my cry for a friend, um, a like minded sister within Torah, um, someone to hold that we hold all things in common with and and he answered he truly answered um, a prayer and and a, and has given me this this blessing of a friendship when I least expected it in the middle of, in the midst of so many trials that we're facing right now, he's just blessing us and blessing me. And, um, so I just, I, you know, memorizing that verse and not even seeing that and, and seeing that as an answer, you know, as a, to a cry for help, you know, mm-hmm. um, anyways. And so something that it made me think of was Psalms 40 verse 32, where um, it says, And the group of those who believed were of one heart and one being, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had all in common. And we obviously know that 
you know, while many say that Acts, you know, this is the first church, we know that it wasn't. We know that church translates to congregation or it's ecclesia, I think in Greek, but that the congregation existed well before <laughs> the newer writings, right? And that's what you were saying, um, how it was in, you know, yeah, well, in I mean, the wilderness. And yeah, in Acts 7, yeah. you know, Stephen is yeah. talking about the church in the wilderness. You mm-hmm. know, it's always been the congregation of Yah. Yeah. His set apart people. Yeah. And so I just, this is finding someone um, who's, you know, just, who loves Yah. And at, you know, at her core, she's just, she believes in Yahusha. She holds the testimony of Yeshua, of Jesus. And she guards the commands. And she loves his ways. And her and her family love his ways. And they love his set apart feast days. And just to find somebody like that and who has similar stories who has a similar story and a similar background and has been through so has just experienced, she says, um, supernatural. I think, I don't know if that's the word that she used, but she's used this word that just, it's like, it's, un, it's unreal. Some of the things that have happened in her life and the things that Yaz led her, these paths that Yaz led her down and they're very similar paths on our story and our journey yeah. back to him. Um, so anyways, I had to share that really quickly because it was just something that is, is it's, it's a significant event for me. Mm-hmm. I have a tour sister, <laughs> <laughs> like a real, a real live friendship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I sent her a Shabbat Shalom this morning over text. It wasn't like, you know, commenting on somebody's Instagram post and you don't know who they are, yeah. you know, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I guess if you're from, Christianity looking in, I think, because when you're a Christian, it's hard to find people, I guess, like-minded in general, but you have, you have an opportunity as a Christian. There are so many, and when I say Christian, I'm talking about like a, you know, a regular, you know, someone who doesn't, believes the law is done away with and someone who, who practices pagan holidays. Yeah. I hate to say that's Christianity, but it is because that's what they believe. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, but that's an, it's easy to find community uh, there. But as soon as you start believing in the Word, actually believing in the Word, not just saying it, but actually saying, wow, okay, I'm going to obey Yah, I'm going to obey what He says, and, and follow His feast days, get rid of these pagan holidays. As soon as you start looking in the mirror, um, and the mirror being Torah, looking at Torah and seeing yourself and, and judging yourself according to Yah's Word and realizing I need to clean up my life, and get rid of these pagan things uh, to get rid of the ways of the heathen, um, you really become alone and you lose um, everything. I mean, we've lost friends and family and and it hurts. Mm -hmm. And you realize that even uh, people who are acquaintances, you can't really get along with. <laughs> I literally I mean, just you, turned to this. I just was thinking Matthew 7 and I turned to it. Oh, so yeah. I have to read it. Go ahead. Um, Therefore, whatever you wish men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the Torah and the prophets. Enter in through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it. Mm-hmm. This is not talking about unbelievers. This is talking about... This is not talking... You know what I'm saying. This is yeah. not talking about... Um, people that don't know Yeshua. This is yeah. There's two billion people worldwide that claim Christianity. Christianity. Yeah, and so that's a that's it's not, not a narrow path. That is not the narrow path, unfortunately. And this and is I, I'm not saying that in anger towards Christianity, but yeah. it's true. But because the gate is narrow, and the way is hard pressed, which leads to life. It's hard. There man. are few who find it, and this says hard pressed or afflicted. The yeah. way is afflicted, and I'm sorry, but I was never afflicted living the Christian life or walking no. the Christian walk. I was never afflicted in the way that I have been afflicted. I have been since we followed Torah, we've been afflicted. Yes, yeah, and that. But the, with also, I'm sorry. Go ahead, now you go. Just, with also so much joy and peace, yes. you know, with it. But what do you say? No, I just the that's how you know that the the way is narrow. Yeah, and it's not for everyone. It should be, and it will be one day, <laughs> yeah. for way more people than that that are walking this this narrow road right now. But um, you know, it's the way. Yeah. And finding somebody that also has experienced the same trials and persecution, um, and since coming to Torah, only confirms that for me. Yeah. Anyways, 
Sorry, I just literally turned to Matthew 7 because I was thinking there were a path in my mind and, you know, obviously the Spirit wanted me to share that. Yeah. All right, so let's get into their sheath. The Targum. So you're reading uh, Genesis Targum? Uh, yeah, Genesis Targum, uh, chapter 5. Okay, you going to start? Yes. This is the book of the genealogy of man. In the day that Yahuwah created man, in the likeness of Yahuwah he made him, male and female he created them, and blessed them in the name of his word. Wow, well that, so, let's just say that's been removed. Yeah, so I, just to start, I, I think I've said this before, but just in case you're just now listening, if you're one of our three listeners, um, this the word mentioned in, in Targum, um, it was taken out of all the Masoretic texts, um, over 200 times. There's over 200 times just in the, ten, the, uh, the Pentateuch, the Torah alone, over 200 times the, the word of Yahuwah has been taken out. As we know, the word of Yahuwah is Yeshua, right. uh, which existed from the beginning. Um, so it's, it's just incredible. And it gives kind of credence to the Targum because, you know, uh, this is written by it gives credence in a way that you, cause people could say, well, this is just rabbinic tradition. Mm -hmm. The Targum is just a bunch of rabbis who threw in their own stuff into the Torah and added to it. Well, sure. They, you could say that cause there are some things in here that I would say seem very Jewish and very, um, I guess like a rabbi, you know, added stuff to the Torah, but why would they add the word of Elohim? Because they surely they would know that the Christians claim the word is Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So it just gives credence to the belief in the Messiah, Yeshua. Right. So it's like, why? It, it just shows that, okay, this, this can't be mm -hmm. rabbinic tradition, you know? And something to always test, um, it, I've heard this and I, I believe this, but something to use to test these extra writings um, and like Targum and, and things like that to test it is to test it according to how we're supposed to live and we're supposed to carry the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach and the, uh, keep the, uh, the laws, the commandments of Elohim. So if you keep those, the testimony in the Torah, just as Isaiah says, if um, to the testimony and to the Torah, if they speak not of these things, there is no light in them. Right. So these extra writings, if they're pro-Torah, then that's a... That's a that's and anti-Messiah. <laughs> and... Or anti... I'm sorry, go ahead. What If they're in... Well, if they're pro-Torah and they believe in Messiah and they're very uh, pro-Messiah, Yeshua, yeah. then uh, they're good. There's validity There's to validity them. to them because you, you have Christians who, would, who obviously in the 1800s from the Protestants, you know, they got rid of so many books mm -hmm. uh, speaking about Torah. And so if obviously Christians are, are against Torah and then, um, then you would have the the uh, the Jew the Jewish um, anti messiah anti that would be anti messiah so it's very interesting or so, anti Yeshua I guess they yeah, believe the Messiah is coming yeah, yeah. right um, just he's not he's yeah. he hasn't arrived yeah so if they speak of both of these things that gives that gives a uh, you know validity to these scriptures uh -huh. and so anyways uh, to, <laughs> that could have probably been said a lot shorter but <laughs> I'm just saying like you know having his word. The word of Elohim in the Targums over 200 times just gives validity to these right. scriptures. Okay, I'll keep reading. And he called their name man. Okay, sorry. And he called their name man in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and beget Sheth, or Seth, who had the likeness of his image of and of his similitude. For before had Hav, Hava, or Eve, born Cain, who was not like to him, and Abel was killed by his hand, and Cain was cast out. Neither is his seed geneolo gene genealogized. Thank you, genealogized, in the book of the genealogy of Adam. But afterwards, there was born one like him, and he called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begat Seth were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. So that's interesting. So he had, you know, we don't really hear about all the daughters they had and mm -hmm. the other sons, really, right. that they had. But there was a lot. Right. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enosh lived ninety ninety years and begat Kenan. 
And Enosh lived after he had begotten Kenan 815 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enosh were 905 years. And he died. And Kenan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalil. And Kenan lived after he had begotten Mahalalil 840 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Kenan were 910 years. And he died. And Mahalalil lived 65 years and begot Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he had begotten Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were 895 years and he died. And Jared lived... It sounds like we're in the 800s of uh, the average lifespan. <laughs> Somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. Right under a thousand, which yeah. goes back to, you know, in the day that you shall sin, you shall die. Right. What, what Yah told Adam, and you know, a day to Yah is a thousand years. Right. So he said, you're going to die within a day. You're not going to live past a thousand years. Isn't that amazing? So how, so how long have we been on? If that's true, then we've been alive, what, a minute? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well... A ten, <laughs> if you just... <laughs> well, so we, yeah, our, our average lifespan, so say before a hundred, so we're a tenth of a, a day. Yeah. So what's a tenth of a day? Like two hours? I can't do that. Man. Yeah, it's like two hours. So yeah. literally, our life is like two hours to Yah. To, yeah. In the in the time frame of Yah, like which is amazing. It was just two hours, and he's yeah. like, "Why are you complaining?" Exactly. Just relax. You'll be you'll be dead and in in paradise here very soon. So exactly. just relax. Yeah, that man. That's you know? interesting. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that was that was kind of interesting. So. Uh, where we beget sons and daughters, and all the days of Mahalalel were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. Uh, I love, read that part. Sorry. And Jared lived after he had begotten Hanuk eight hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. And on the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And Hanuk lived sixty-five years, and begat Methuselah. And ha- and Hanuk worshipped in truth before Yahuwah after he had begotten Methuselah. 300 years and beget sons and daughters and all the days of Hanuk with the sojourners of the earth were 365 years. And Hanuk served in the truth before Elohim. And behold, he was not with the sojourners of the earth for he was withdrawn and he ascended to the firmament by the word before Yahuwah. By the word before Yahuwah. Okay, stop. (laughs) Because... So we're talking about Enoch, right? Yes. Okay. I'm um, sorry, Hanok. Hanok. <laughs> mine says mine looks like Hanok. So, but we're talking about Enoch. So I think let's just pause there because there's so much um, that is just not. I mean, the Book of Enoch. I have not even read it. I've only read it through your eyes and through your experience and through things that you've shared. But um, there's so little about him in even in the scriptures that I'm reading from, okay? So, and Hanak, uh, Enoch, um, the only thing I'm just reading, he walked with Elohim 300 years. Um, he brought, I'm sorry, yeah, Hanak walked with Elohim 300 years and brought forth sons and daughters. Uh, so all the days of Hanak were 365 years. That's interesting, 365. Mm-hmm. Um, and Enoch walked with Elohim. Then he was no more, for Elohim took him. That's it. That's all you so get. So can yeah. we now, so I just, you know, because we're, this part of this reading is really helping understand the differences between the translations or the, you know, right, the versions. Um, and I'd, I'd like for you to read again that he it says he worshiped in truth and he served in the truth before the Lord, uh, before Elohim. And we know truth, Psalm 119, 142, my truth is the Torah. Right. Yeah, I, it, that's just so significant to me that he worshipped in truth before Yahuwah. Yeah. You know, and that's, it says he walked with him, but he, he worshipped him He was also a Melchizedek priest. Yeah. That's going to have to be a separate discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's so beautiful. I mean, it's, oh, it's just, it's just in, incredible. There's just so much about Enoch that we just don't know. Yeah. You know. Thing. Well, so, you know, I, I don't know if, uh, I feel like this is in um, Jasher. I can't remember what book it's in, talking about Jared. Um, man, I don't remember. But Jared, during the days of Jared, that's when the sons of um, the sons of Elohim, being, being the sons of Elohim, uh, uh, genealogy of Adam, but also um, the Watchers. Mm. Uh, you know, if you read the Book of Enoch, the Watchers came down. 
uh, desired earth women and uh, slept with them, you know, baby ha- uh, had babies with them. Um, they were just angels, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were a certain class of angels that were in the firmament mm-hmm. and our firmament, yeah. you know, and, you know, Wanda and, you know, started lusting after the women. And, uh, but Jared also came off the mountain. So, the, you know, I think this is the book of Adam and Eve, the second book of Adam and Eve. And Jared, the sons of Adam are living on top of the mountain where they could smell the sweet smell of Eden, Garden mm. of Eden. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit last week. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, I think we did. So Jared, you know, Hasatan comes to Jared with a bunch of his angels. Mm-hmm. With a bunch of his angels, and they have a bunch of women with them. And he's like, hey, Jared, come look what we get to have. Come on down here. And so they get them to come off the mountain with a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And I think Jared ends up uh, repenting and gets to go back up. But um, but once you get off the mountain, you can't can't go back up. Right. Uh, for whatever reason, but they were having like parties and playing music and like all these orgies and everything. This children of Cain were. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what's interesting is at this point you have the world has been so tainted, the bloodline uh, has been so um, destroyed with the Watchers. You have angels' blood, or however that can be. I'm not sure, but you have angel DNA mixed with human DNA, and you you get the Nephilim and, and different classes of giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is all discussed in the Book of Enoch, um, and in in many other places. I mean, it it, it um, there's tons of places where it's discussed. Other books, there's not just one witness. Um, but anyways, that's not what this is about. But it's just amazing that uh, Enoch was chosen to. He was brought up into the paradise of Elohim, the city of Enoch, yeah. as a Melchizedek priest, um, able to transcend the veil as all Melchizedek priests are, and the veil of the firmament and uh, gets to basically gets to go up. And according to the book of Enoch is, is basically um, giving the watchers their uh, punishment through Yah. So Yahuwah is telling the punishment. Well, well, Enoch gets to basically tell them. And who, who is it that writes? Is that Peter that says, don't you know that we judge angels? Or is that Paul? Someone says, don't you know you're going to be judging angels? Because this is the, this is what the holy set apart peculiar people get to do. We actually judge uh, the angels, mm-hmm. you know, if if we are chosen to be that, right? Um, to be, you know, priests set apart. And anyway, priests mean something. When Peter says that you are a holy set apart people, a priesthood for Yah, peculiar people, like that means something to be a priest. There are certain duties of a priest that you have to do. It's not that you're just some, you know, church going person you know there's things when you become a priest like you're going to become it later on we're not right. i'm not a priest now right you know i know there's a lot of people that claim to be their priests now but it's like you know mm-hmm. anyways that that was a well, well this was um the one part that you read here in the targum it says that uh, enoch served in truth before elohim and behold he was not with the sojourners of the earth for he was withdrawn and he ascended to the firmament by the word before the, before elohim and his name was called metron the great safra metatron I, i'm sorry metatron yeah that's interesting meta what does that mean uh, what was he called? Meta- Metatron the Great Safra. There's more written about that, but I don't have it written here. Okay. So I've got a, I don't know. We, maybe we could come back to that because there is something, it's weird. I mean, it sounds like a uh, Transformer or something. <laughs> Metatron, <laughs> but, but I mean, he gets turned into basically an angel. Wow. Uh, which it sounds crazy. I mean, if you're just now hearing this, you're, you're probably like, man, this is some wild stuff. This is not yeah. real. But... <laughs> If you read some of these books that were in the 1611 KJV, like Second Ezra and Baruch, you read these things and they talk about that you will be transformed into an angel of light, the ones who are set apart and keep the Torah of Elohim and the testimony of Yahu- mm-hmm. Yahusha. You know, we get to be those and the stars are actually us, yeah. the reflections of us, the, the set apart ones. Mm-hmm. These are things that are written in these books that have been taken out. Yeah. The Bible, the, the Bible as we know it, is much crazier and more strange than we've ever, ever been taught. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Truth really is stranger than fiction. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's not some boring book that we have to sit through a service and listen to. This book is incredible. Yeah. I mean, it blows my mind yeah. continually. The Torah and Prophets is... Um, 
man, my view of the Torah and prophets now is so much different than it was. It was the boring Old Testament. Yeah, it was. And it was taught that way too. It was taught <laughs> yeah. to be boring. Well, yeah. we're going to... Not applicable. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to have a couple of verses from the Torah, but then we're going to go straight to Paul because that's yeah. that's really exciting. But I'm like, man, like, I just, whew, I, I just and can't even, you, there's so much in here. But then when you take, you take um, like Genesis, the first five books, the Pentate- is that what it is, the Pentateuch, however you say that, and then you sprinkle in the book of Adam and Eve, and you sprinkle in the book of Jasher, and you read those, once you've read it, read it a few times, and then you pull in those biblical texts that have been removed or missing, it is. It is a complete story. It fill it fills in the blanks. There's so little written about Adam and Eve, about their story, their life in the garden, their life outside of the garden, and oh, I would just encourage one of the four people listening if they, they who've probably already read it. But, yeah. Oh, the book of Adam and Eve. I I want to go back and read it again because now I I mean I read it before I even came to Torah, and was blown away. And so and then Jasher. And Jasher is even online. You can download the book of Jasher. You don't even have to. There's you can download a free app. Yeah, that's the just the book of Jasher, and you can read it. Um, but I would encourage anybody that reads it just put it right next to Genesis. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's going. It is going to literally fill in some blanks. You know that you didn't even know were missing. Like it's going to fill yeah. in the blanks, and yeah. you're going to realize, wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know that I wanted to know that. Yeah. Um, you know, especially about, uh, like, I think about the Tower of Babel and how there's so much about it that I just, I still, it still resonates with me. Yeah, he and, was, li- they were literally building it up to heaven to attack God. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just some little measly tower that was, you know, a few stories t- high or anything. Yeah. It, it, it says it was able to, uh, they were they were doing it to pierce the firmament. Right. Oh, there's where cosmology comes in play if you can't, if you believe we're on a spinning globe, but there's... You, you know, there is a firmament, by the way. So oh, okay, that's a that, so uh, Melchizedek priesthood and biblical cosmology. I think we definitely should share our. Well, don't say thoughts anything on that. about the the V. We'll get, no, we won't. Um, I wanted to read something because you said something. Uh, where is it? Just about the text or two hundred and four Sephirim. Se- yes. Okay. So fourth Ezra. Uh, this is this is Ezra that we have in our canon, Nehemiah and Ezra. But this is the fourth Ezra. This was in the 1611 KJV. Um, it was removed in the 1800s um, by by a bunch of Protestant Freemasons, and this is this was on purpose. And you tell people now that oh, you need to read Fourth Ezra. You need, they're like that. Now it's heresy. How dare you? You know. But this is amazing. Fourth Ezra. Basically, they're coming out of Babylon, and the Torah has been destroyed. You know, there's no Torah. There's nothing for anyone to look, really read. It's by word of mouth. And Ezra is basically, you know, saying, "Yah, how will people in the future know? How are they going to know about your ways mm-hmm. and everything that that you you know told us to do? Like they, the Torah's been destroyed. What yeah. are we going to do?" And uh, and Yah basically tells Ezra, "Hey, go up in this field." Uh, maybe I got the story wrong. But anyways, I, at some point, Ezra is eating a bunch of flowers. Eat nothing but flowers and fast. Mm-hmm. Fast for like 40 days or something. I, 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 I'm i just, I'm paraphrasing. But he 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 fasts, gets a bunch of, bunch of scribes together, and they write day and night to write day and night everything that is basically being downloaded from Yah into Ezra's brain. And he's speaking it out. And these scribes are just, down, you know, writing wow. all these scriptures. Um, so let me read this real quick. It's it's just Fourth incredible. Ezra, four, uh, chapter fourteen. Yeah, chapter fourteen. Um, okay, so forty verse forty. Uh, let's see, you understand? Five. Okay, so let's start at uh, forty one. And my mouth was opened and shut no more. El Elyon gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not. And they sat forty days, and they wrote in the day. And at night they ate bread. As for me, I spoke in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. So night and day in 40. In 40 days they wrote 204 sephirim, so books. 204 books. 
And we had the 66 books in the canon now. And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled that El Elyon spoke, saying, The first that you have written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the 70 last, that you may deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, Mm. the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And I did so. So there's there's so there's 204 books total. Only 70 of them were to be delivered to the wise. So they're they were almost hidden. So what does that leave? Uh, 134. Mm-hmm. So 134 books were given to the worthy and unworthy. So that's already double what we have today in the canon. Mm-hmm. So we really as as believers in Messiah, we really need to open up our minds right. and test all things like we are to do instead of just counting things out and saying, no, I won't read that. You know, I, I think we need to open up our minds and say, okay, there's a possibility that there are quite a bit more books than we ever thought. Yeah. You know, and my goodness, so there was 204 books total. Yeah. And I think people That's amazing. I think people naturally um want to reject those writings because, you know, I mean, you you get a book published by this is published by the Institute for Scripture Research. Well, well they know what they're talking about. These are the 66. These are the ones that count. You know, these were in, these were Well, that includes the New Testament as well. Yeah. So this is before the New Testament. And that was before the New Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're exactly right. But I think what's fascinating is that the more the more I think I know, the less I know, because when I start reading, you know, you find, I know you have found, um, you know, where so, so many of these texts that have been removed have been quoted. I think we said this one other so week. So many times. Yeah, yeah, so many times. And so I remember sharing that with a friend of mine. Just read Enoch or read Jasher because they're quoted. David quotes Jasher. You know, yeah, it's and um, you know, and and Enoch is or uh, Ezra is quoted. You know, Ezra's quoted. I mean, just just read those if you don't want to k- even open up the mind to see anything else. Just read the ones that are that are quoted. Yeah, <laughs> from- there's a there's a really cool book written by a transformer called Metatron. <laughs> you know, the book of Enoch, also known is, as Enoch. <laughs> yeah, also known as Enoch. But just even this morning, uh, I'll digress a second. We're almost actually done with chapter five. Um, but since we're kind of, we're, we clearly bounce around from topic to topic. And, you know, that might, people might think that we're crazy for, you know, for doing that. And just, why can't you just stick to a topic? But there's just, our energy and excitement is just like, it bounces in for, for the love of, of Elohim and, and, um, the, his inspired word and the inspired writings. And, um, but we were just reading this morning, right? Um, I had shared on Instagram, first John two, um, three through six, I think, which talks about, um, well, let me just read it. Let's just digress for one second. Okay. And do you want me to read this while you find that? Yes. Go ahead and read that. So this is the last, uh, little bit of of uh, yes, I'm Genesis sorry. Genesis yeah, five. So, and Methuselah lived 187 years and beget Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he had begotten Lamech 782 years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 902 and 60 and nine years. So that's a little different from the canon. Uh, his age, and he died. And Lamech lived 182 years and begot a son, and he called his name Noah. Uh, meaning consolation, saying, This shall console us for our works that are not prosperous, and for the labor of our hands with the earth, earth, which Yahuwah hath cursed on account of the guilt of the sons of men. And Lamech lived after he had begotten Noah 595 years, and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Lamech were 777 years. And he died. And Noah was the son of 500 years. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's the end of uh, chapter five. Chapter five, yeah. So obviously, I'm really excited for for chapter six because you know we're things are about to get real. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> in chapter six we can throw in some stuff about Enoch and yeah, do a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more preparation. Have some some stuff to actually to read of Enoch, just yeah. in case if you're not familiar with it, right? Um, but even if you are, I mean, Enoch's beautiful. There's so much prophecy of Yahusha, uh, which is beautiful. I, I just I love it, but 
So I want to end this, um, you know, Shabbat reading in conversation around something I posted yesterday um, on Instagram and a fellow Torah brother or sister, I'm not even sure who it was, posted something, posted it, not something, but posted a verse um, that says in First John 2, um, First John 2, 6, the one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked and he being referred to as Yeshua or Jesus. So if we, you know, we, we say, you know, we're going to walk as he walked, right? Um, even in Christianity, well, how did he walk? So let's read right before that. And, and this person on Instagram posted, you know, um, you know, ate as he ate, right? Follow the dietary laws, um, rest as he rested, right? Rest on the Sabbath, the fourth command, you know, follow the commands of, of the father walk, yeah. you know, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. But walk as he walked, you know, yeah. he was the walking Torah. He was he the walking be, instruction or he, can't be Messiah. or he can't be Messiah, but he had to be sinless. Yeah, absolutely. And so walk as he walked. So I've shared, um, first John two, three, or as uh, my husband says, it's as easy as one, two, three. How do you know them? It's as easy as one, two, three. I didn't make that up. I got that from somebody. I know, but this is what you say. I didn't say it's quoted by Jim. But um, it's how do you how do we know how do we know that we know Yahuwah? It's as easy as one, two, three. First John two three. By this we know that we know him if we guard his commands. The one who says, I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever guards his word, guards it. Doesn't follow it perfectly does not mean that we should not strive to. But the one who guards his word, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected, Psalm 119, 1, in him. By this we know that we are in him. And then the, the verse, the one who says he stays in him also ought also himself to walk, even as he walked. So, you know, I put, I shared those verses and then shared um, the the Torah brother sisters post about, you know, walk as he walked, follow the commands, guard the commands, you know, rest on the Sabbath, Follow the dietary laws. I mean, um, celebrate the feast days. Walk away from the pagan traditions. You know, Ye- Yeshua wasn't celebrating his birth and his death. <laughs> he did, you know, he wasn't celebrating those things. He was celebrating Passover. He was present for all of the feast days. Anyway, so this morning, you were reading um, something out of the book of the Order of the Ancients, right? The writings of um, Abraham, Abraham. Mm-hmm. and I want you to share that because it ties directly to to the verses in First John and then to John eight. Um, let me just read John eight. Well, you read your read, you read, read your read John eight. 56. Okay, so John eight fifty six says. And let me read the verse before that because that specifically um, ties directly to John's to First John the First John writing and John eight fifty five. And you have not known him, but I know him. This is you. This is Yeshua speaking about his father and you have not known him but i know him and if i say i do not know him i shall be like you a liar but i do know him and i guard his word verse 56 your father abraham was glad that he should see my day and he saw it and did rejoice okay well i have skimmed over that verse a hundred times not even realizing or understanding what it means but in the writings of abraham yeah where 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 did in the torah where did abraham see Yeshua and rejoiced. You know, there are some vi- a vision where he sees, you know, I think he sees the kingdom and, and, and Yah is basically giving him the promise of his seed. But where did he see Yahusha? And where did he see this in the sun, the, the day of the son of man? Mm-hmm. You know, but the writings of Abraham, which Abraham's such an amazing, uh, uh, I mean, he's a, a great, um, you know, person in the scriptures, but we have no writings from him. You know, why are these writings not here? And so the writings of Abraham, um, basically Abraham's having this vision of the kingdom. And this is part of the vision. And Yahuwah touched my eyes of mine understanding, and they were opened, and I beheld the days of the Son of Man. For I beheld him ministering unto my seed, teaching them the Torah of Elohim, healing the sick, casting out devils, and doing more, many wonderful works. This is literally John eight fifty six. This is literally he's seeing the days of the Son of Man, Yahushua. Yeah. I saw also the Son of Man lifted up upon 
a cross for the sins of man. Wherefore I wept for the wickedness of man, which could crucify the Son of Elohim. Nevertheless I saw also that he should rise again from the dead, wherein my heart did rejoice, and my soul found rest in the knowledge that though I should die, yet again in the flesh should I see Elohim and dwell in the land of mine inheritance. For I saw also the days of the coming of the Son of Man upon the earth in the last days, when he shall descend with ten thousands of his saints, his set-apart ones, according to the prophecy of Father Enoch, and the earth shall be cleansed by fire. Then all shall rise and stand before Elohim, both the just and the unjust, to be judged according to their works. And it's a beautiful vision that he's been given of, of Messiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of his, his first coming and then of his second coming, you know. Right. To take vengeance. Right. But I, I think that's something so, it's so important that, you know, um, in that vision, he saw Yeshua not just healing the sick and casting out demons and doing many wonderful works, you know, and and, um, training his disciples and ultimately, you know, bearing the cross and dying for our sins, but he was teaching the Torah. Mm -hmm. Of Elohim. He was teaching his disciples and probably everyone. Yeah. (laughs) All the crowds that would gather. That's what he was teaching. And... um, Anyways, I, I I think that just ties so beautifully to to John eight fifty six, which then ties to, you know, I mean, First John two, yeah, um, and just how do we know him? How did how did Yeshua know the Father? Mm-hmm. Well, he guarded his word. Yeah, he followed the Torah. He taught the Torah. He followed the Torah, but he guarded the word of Elohim, and that's how you know him. Yeah. Is to keep his commandments. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, and there'll be many who will say in the end, you know. I'll say, Father, Lord, Lord, what about me? Come didn't, on. Didn't I prophesy? Didn't and... I prophesy? Didn't I do these? Didn't I go to church? Didn't I didn't I love you? Didn't I like go, you know, celebrate Christmas and celebrate the real meaning of Christmas? Mm-hmm. And do the these things. Reason for the season? Yeah, didn't I do all these things? He's gonna say, Depart from me. I never knew you. You, you workers, workers of, of lawlessness. lawlessness. You didn't believe in the law. You didn't keep the law. That's why it's such a burden for us and many Torah people. Once once your eyes have been opened by Elohim, it's not us, Mm-mm. but the Spirit led us through to Torah. And once you see it, man, you just want everyone to know about it. Yeah. And then you experience uh, rejection. And you experience that everyone doesn't want to hear about it. And uh, they don't like it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really sad. And... Anyways, I mean, if you're the, if, you know, I love how it says that Yeshua, you know, came to teach the law of Elohim, you know, and he's teaching him. There's many things that haven't been written about him. And John says in the last, the last chapter of John, um, I think it's in John, right? Anyways, he says that the books couldn't even, all the books in the world couldn't contain all the works that he did. Wow. So we have four gospels, four known gospels that, that are in the canon. And that's it. And he's saying that all the books in the world couldn't contain all the things that Yahushua did. So hearing that, it's like, man, like if you're the enemy and you're trying and you knew the son of man, the son of Elohim, the Messiah came down and he's coming back for vengeance. Hmm. What would you do to all those people who know about him? Well, first you try to kill them off. Mm-hmm. But then there's all these writings, and the you, it's hard to destroy an idea, right? The the idea that's been written down. You, how are you going to destroy this new belief? Mm-hmm. The best thing to do is to change what he said, to try to hide what he said, right. to try to make him into something. It's like if you can't beat him, join him, right? So what the enemy d- did is create a man of lawlessness. They created the Messiah into a man of lawlessness to this hippie, Jesus figure that basically is all love and mm-hmm. doesn't care about about the law, the law of Elohim and actually knowing Elohim. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. But yeah. it's just beautiful. It's, like it seems like it's been hidden that I think it has been hidden and it's in there, but it's, it's hard to search out. It's not as easy to find that uh, our Messiah was first of all a Jew and um, 
of the lineage of David and didn't veer off the path, was teaching the Torah. He didn't Torah, start the a Lenin. new religion. He didn't start a new religion, no. And, he and was there was teaching. no religion to be. I mean, religion is just, you know, it's a word that was cre- man created. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Yah didn't start a religion. It's literally Yah's ways. And when he comes down and tells us, it tells us a little bit about the kingdom, gives us insight to the kingdom. Man, we should, we should be like, yes, we're going to do it. And that's exactly what the Israelites did. They said, yeah, we'll do everything you say to do. And then they didn't. Mm-hmm. And they fought against it. Yeah. Their whole the whole time, and then they they still fight against it, and we do too. We as you know, you know, I don't know, followers of him have all we've been doing our whole life is fight against his law and his ways. So I, this was actually supposed to be a shorter one because we had such a small chapter, and it was and just really talking about the lineage of Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're literally like an hour in. It, I'm sorry that this is so pro Torah. Actually, I'm not sorry. Yeah, don't don't. Apologize. I'm not sorry that this is pro Torah, but. Um, but it just is when you when you really dig in and read the scripture as a whole, um, you'll see that the whole Bible is about His Word. The whole of Scripture is about Him and His ways and His Son, because His Son is His ways. And if it's your instruction for life, right? Yeah. It's how we're supposed to live. Why wouldn't we be talking about it? Exactly. Because it's helping keep it, it helps keep us in the guardrails, yeah. right, from sinning. If we're talking about the things that we should be following and doing and not doing, then it's if that if if the Torah is on our tongue and it's constantly in our mouths, right? It's what our hearts meditating on. Yeah. It's what we're constantly thinking of. You know, we're seeking the kingdom. We're seeking and pursuing holiness. All of those things come back to Yah's word. To his word, to his Torah, yeah. So his it should be the thing that we talk about the most. Well, it's what I, what I said earlier about Isaiah, if, to the Torah and to the Testament, if they speak not on these things, it's because there is no light in them. Right. This is truly just the light shining out of us. And not that we are anything important. Right. We are sinners, horrible sinners. Uh, you know, I'm the worst sinner I know. Right. Well, I'm not, there's nothing about me. Your word is a light into my, about you. Yes. Yeah. well, your word, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was just thinking your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path, mm-hmm. right? Your word, your instruction, Yeah. right? So if it's not lighting our path or every, every day, sorry, I'm, I'm no, maybe not going. saying that correctly, but no, I want, no, it's, fine. it should be lighting our path, right? Yeah. And it should be constantly keeping us um, following, you know, following that narrow path <laughs> and that's why it comes up so much that's why we're sitting here you know saying it well i mean i thought you were quoting that verse uh, uh proverbs six twenty three. for the commandment is a lamp See, yeah and for the cam- commandment is a lamp and the torah is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life yeah it's I the mean, way all of comes life. back to light within yeah. you yeah yeah and and you know and we're supposed to walk means- as our messiah walked and he walked in the light and what because is, he is the light. Yeah. And what does it mean, reproofs of instruction? Reproofs mean, reproof means... Um, correction. Correction. So... There's got to be instruction to correct someone with. You know, there's got to be a law to correct someone to. Yeah. If there is no law, then there is no correction. And if there is no correction, there is no sin. And if there is no sin, then there is no need for grace. Right. And if there's no grace, then you don't need a Messiah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's just, I'm sorry. It just keeps going back to that, you know? And I was talking with someone this week who is, who was telling me I'm wrong. I'm deceived uh, for believing in Torah. And then I, I asked him, have you read Torah? And he said, no, he's never read the Torah. And he's telling me that I'm deceived because of the Torah. It's so sad. I just, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. I'm not mad. Yeah. It, it, I'm not mad, and I don't. I don't think I know anything more than these people, but it just breaks my heart when people they're going to be held accountable because they have a a copy of Yah's actual instruction for life sitting on their nightstand, and they refuse to crack it open and actually read it. They can't get beyond Paul's writings mm-hmm. or the Gospels or anything like that to actually to see what they're all written about. Right. The Gospels and everything New Testament is only, it's just a commentary on the older writings. Yeah. 
I hate to even say New or Old Testament, but, yeah. you know, it, it's just commentary. It's not bad. It's wonderful. But how do we understand them? Yeah. If we don't know what they understood. Or what they read. Or what they read, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rob Skiba. I miss him. He was amazing. I don't know. Mm. But anyways. Okay. Well, All right. That's, I think that's it for the... Thank you for... Not. If you made it for an hour, you're incredible. <laughs> I cannot believe someone listened to us talk and jabber for an hour. But, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, Shabbat Shalom. All praise to the Most High. Yes. Have a good day. Time.